Imagine living in a world where your basic rights are trampled upon daily. This is the reality for people in Myanmar, a land that has been under the iron fist of military dictatorship for decades. This Southeast Asian nation, rich in culture and history, is a mystery to many. Its political landscape is a puzzle, marked by the struggle for power, the suppression of basic freedoms, and the denial of human rights. This is a world where freedom of speech is a dream, and liberty a distant mirage. The people of Myanmar live under constant fear, their voices silenced, their hopes crushed. Yet amid the darkness, the spirit of resistance prevails. As we unravel the enigma that is Myanmar's dictatorship, we delve into a tale of resilience, of courage, and of an unyielding hope for a better tomorrow. As we dive into the details, remember this is not just about politics. It's about human lives. The seeds of dictatorship were sown in Myanmar decades ago. The year was 1962, and the nation formerly known as Burma was on the precipice of a seismic shift. A military coup d'etat led by General Ne Win abruptly ended the fledgling democracy that had been in place since the country's independence in 1948. The coup marked the dawn of a new era, an era of military rule that would last for almost half a century. The military junta, known as the Burma Socialist Programme Party, took control of the country's political, economic, and social life. The junta claimed that its mission was to preserve national unity and prevent the disintegration of the country. But as we will see, the reality was far from this noble claim. Under the military rule, Myanmar became one of the world's most isolated and impoverished nations. The junta implemented a peculiar brand of socialism, which they dubbed the Burmese way to socialism. It involved nationalizing all industries, severing ties with the outside world, and pursuing a policy of autarky, or economic self-sufficiency. But these policies resulted in economic stagnation and widespread poverty. The military junta also wielded a heavy hand against any form of dissent. They suppressed protests, censored the press, and detained political opponents. The brutal crackdown on the 1988 pro-democracy protests, known as the 8,888 Uprising, was a particularly dark chapter in Myanmar's history. Thousands of protesters, many of them students, were killed or imprisoned. Despite the junta's iron grip on power, resistance continued to simmer beneath the surface. Opposition parties emerged, most notably the National League for Democracy, led by Aung San Suu Kyi. But it would take decades before these seeds of resistance would bear fruit. This was the beginning of a dark era for the people of Myanmar. An era that would test their resilience and determination in the face of adversity. But it was also a period that would shape the country's political landscape in ways that continue to reverberate today. Life under a dictatorship is a life lived in fear. And this fear, my friends, has been a constant companion for the people of Myanmar under the military rule. It's an oppressive regime that has taken extensive measures to suppress dissent and stifle the voices that dare to speak out against them. Imagine a world where expressing your thoughts could land you in prison, or worse. This is the reality for many in Myanmar. The military government has consistently used intimidation, violence and arbitrary detentions as their tools of choice in their quest for control. Free speech is a luxury that the people of Myanmar can't afford. Speaking out against the regime means putting your life on the line but it doesn't stop at suppressing dissent. The human rights abuses committed by the military government are shocking and deeply troubling. Extrajudicial killings, forced labor, and sexual violence have been used as weapons of war. Innocent civilians, including children, have been caught in the crossfire. The plight of the people is heart-wrenching, their stories a chilling testament to the horrors of living under a dictatorship. The military government has also made use of laws and policies to tighten their grip on power. Laws have been twisted and manipulated to serve the interests of the ruling elite. The judiciary, instead of being a beacon of justice, has become a puppet in the hands of the military, used to legitimize their rule and silence any form of opposition. It's a reign of fear, where the shadow of the military looms large over every aspect of daily life. The streets are patrolled by armed forces, ready to quell any sign of resistance. The media is tightly controlled, with news carefully curated to maintain the narrative of the regime. 
The internet is heavily censored, cutting off the people from the outside world and stifling their ability to organize and resist. The people of Myanmar have been living in this state of fear for decades. And yet, amidst this reign of fear, there is resilience, there is courage, there is hope. And we'll delve into that in the next scene. In the face of oppression, the people's will for freedom can never be extinguished. As the 20th century drew to a close and a new millennium dawned, the winds of change began to stir in Myanmar. A spark of hope ignited in the hearts of those who yearned for democracy. A spark that would grow into a flame, lighting up the path towards freedom and justice. The pro-democracy movements in Myanmar began to take shape, fueled by the courage and resilience of the people. These movements were not just political uprisings, but a testament to the indomitable spirit of human beings, their innate desire for liberty, and their undying faith in the democratic process. At the center of this democratic uprising was a woman of remarkable courage and determination, Aung San Suu Kyi, a Nobel laureate and the daughter of Myanmar's independence hero, Aung San, she became the face of the pro-democracy movement in the country. Her party, the National League for Democracy, emerged as a beacon of hope for those who aspired for a democratic Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi's peaceful resistance against the military regime, her unyielding fight for democracy, and her sacrifices for the people of Myanmar were instrumental in fostering a sense of hope and optimism. Her election as the state councillor in 2016 was hailed as a victory of democracy over military rule, a victory of the people's will over oppression. However, the path to democracy is often fraught with challenges and setbacks. The military junta, unwilling to relinquish their power, posed significant obstacles to the democratic process. Despite the hope and optimism, the journey towards a democratic Myanmar remained a steep uphill climb. But even this glimmer of hope was short-lived. Just when the world thought Myanmar was on the path to democracy, darkness fell once again. In the chilly dawn of February 1, 2021, the military, also known as the Tatmadaw, seized control of Myanmar. Their grip tightened around the country's fragile democracy, shattering the 10-year spell of quasi-civilian rule. The military leaders declared a year-long state of emergency, detaining the elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi and other officials from the ruling party. They justified their actions with allegations of widespread electoral fraud in the November 2020 elections, a claim that was widely dismissed by the international community. The coup sparked a wave of civil unrest across the nation. Thousands of people from all walks of life took to the streets in what is now known as the civil disobedience movement. Doctors, teachers, students, and civil servants, they all united under a common banner of resistance, voicing their opposition to the military rule and demanding the restoration of democracy. But the Tatmadaw's response was swift and brutal. They unleashed a campaign of violence against the peaceful protesters, employing tear gas, rubber bullets, and in some instances, live ammunition. Despite the escalating violence and internet blackouts, the spirit of resistance among the people of Myanmar has not wavered. Their fight for democracy continues, fueled by their unwavering belief in a future free from fear and oppression. As of now, the situation in Myanmar remains tense and uncertain. The international community watches with bated breath, their calls for peace and restoration of democracy echoing around the globe. Sanctions have been imposed, but their effectiveness remains to be seen. The military's grip on power seems unyielding, their willingness to use force undimmed. The future of Myanmar hangs in the balance. The situation in Myanmar is not just a national issue, but a global one. Its dictatorship sends ripples across international waters, affecting diplomatic relations, global politics, and humanitarian concerns. International organizations and foreign countries play crucial roles in this crisis, their actions and reactions shaping the course of Myanmar's future. The United Nations, for example, has been vocal about its condemnation of the military coup urging for the restoration of the democratically elected government. Various countries, too, have imposed sanctions, aiming to pressure the military junta into relinquishing control. 
But the effectiveness of these measures remains to be seen. The crisis in Myanmar also poses a threat to regional stability. Neighboring countries are feeling the strain as refugees cross borders, fleeing the turmoil. This displacement of people not only highlights the human rights violation, but also raises concerns over the potential for escalated conflicts. As we reflect on the events in Myanmar, we must remember the real human cost of dictatorship and the universal value of freedom. The struggle of the Myanmar people is a stark reminder of the importance of democracy and the lengths to which some will go to suppress it.